tonight. We are going to try something different. The top 15. Find a partner right away. Yo, guys, what's up? Team up for a game of chicken. Come on. A well-known ingredient. Woo! What the hell? I am not getting this off. One great partner. Why did you slice it that way? Piece of cake. I've seen better than Junior Master Chef. Who mauled this? And then a grueling challenge returns. Oh. A dish that strikes fear in the heart of every home cook. Top 15. Let's go, guys. I'm in the top 15. Each mentor has five aprons left in the competition. Being one of the youngest, like, I did not expect to make it this far. Oh, but no. I'm here for Gordon. Welcome back. Let's go. And I'm not going home anytime soon. Oh, man, what are these? Last month, I was in accounting, closing the books. Now I'm out here closing in to this MasterChef title. I'm looking at the other home cooks. These are definitely the cream of the crop. OK, are all of you ready for tonight's challenge? Yes. yes. Tonight, you will be working in pairs. Oh. And guess what? You can choose your own partners. Love it. Please find a partner right away. Do we have partners? Oh. Yeah, OK. I want to work with Shanika because she has a lot of knowledge about food. And she always telling the truth. She not sugar coating. I think most of the people, they don't like it. Caesar? There's one individual in particular that I would just be enamored to be working with, and that's Caesar. Sir? And I think there's a lot I can learn from somebody like him. Uh, uh, yo, what's up? Yo, guys, what's up, dude? All right, everyone's got a partner. I got left. Ralph, you don't have a partner. I got left out. There is nobody left. Oh, my god. I feel like I just got picked last in dodgeball. Like, this is not a good feeling. Sorry, Ralph. Now, tonight, You'll all have to work with. Nice. Carrots. Whole chicken, carrots, onion, bacon, and cornmeal. Five stunning ingredients that are really accessible to any American home cook. Gordon, Aron, and I took those five simple ingredients and we each made a different dish. Oh. oh. Now, when I see ingredients like this, my mind immediately goes to classic Italian flavors. So I made chicken cacciatore with polenta and crispy pancetta. Fantastic. For me, when I see these five ingredients, first thing I thought about was incorporating my southern and Latin roots. So I made cornmeal crusted chicken thigh with bacon jam, carrot and chipotle puree, and fried onions. It doesn't get better than that. Now, both those dishes look amazing. But for me, I think of the French countryside. So here you have an amazing pan-seared chicken breast, spiced roasted carrots, caramelized onions, and a beautiful polenta cake. Amazing. Wow. Now, for you, Ralph, listen carefully. Sure. Since you don't have a partner, Tonight, you get to cook with your mentor, Joe Bastiano. Oh, that's cool, Joe. That's cool, Joe. <laughs> Me and you, baby. How lucky are you, bro? I got you, Joe. Here's the best news. You're also safe from elimination. Oh, wow. Joe, please join the big man, Ralph. All right. Best of luck. Wow. It's the dream team. Dream team right here. Huh? All right. So, Home Cooks and Joe, tonight you will have 45 minutes to make an exquisite dish utilizing whole chicken, carrot, onion, bacon, and cornmeal. You'll also have access to a pantry that features a wide array of ingredients They'll help you personalize all of your dishes. Now, everybody ready? Yes, yes, Chef. Your 45 minutes start 
Now, let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. What are you thinking? I'm thinking pakora waffle. Yeah. I true. think that's a cool idea. I love this. So we'll do this really quick. I'm happy to work with Taylor. We worked in a field challenge together. She stepped up as captain. I mean, we can do also do the one of the onions, but we can. And we both have a strong respect for each other. I know that having her as a partner is going to be stellar. All right, so we have five ingredients here, Gordon. The chicken, the carrot, the onion, the bacon, and the cornmeal. I dream this ingredients. Do you want me to do both onions? I mean, you might as well chop them up. These amateurs tonight should be so familiar, but I want to see an elevated dish, almost like two signature dishes combining into one unique plate. Absolutely. I got acid of the wine, acid of the lemon. All right. So tonight, working in pairs, Caesar and Mark. Flint is there in two minutes. Chelsea and Samantha. What do you think? Farhan and Emily. Oh, Can I try that? Shanika and Bowen. They're looking good, Bowen. Yep. Ashley and Taylor. I think we got it. Ryan and Jerome. A little garlic powder for sure. And Julia and SJ. Do you want to do that thing with the crispy skin? Yeah, sure. Come on, come on. I got you. I'm teaching them everything I know. There's going to be no secrets left by the time this is done. So who do you think is going to shine tonight? I'm looking at Jerron and Ryan. They both have a love for southern flavors. Sure. So I'm looking sure. for them to be very successful. This polenta is simply corn, right? Corn, just yeah, corn. Yeah, 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 just okay. corn. Okay. But it's going to add kind of a more crunchy texture. You have a measuring cups over there? Yeah. Ashley and Taylor, OK? Two of my girls. Yep. I think, personally, they're too friendly. They might not want to say that tough thing to one another. Or correct one another. Exactly. That's what I'm worried about. Do you have a spoon? You need a spoon. You need a spoon. You need a spoon. Yeah. You need yeah. It? yeah. Guys, 10 minutes gone, 35 minutes to go. We're kind of doing like our play on some southern food, so we're doing an Indian spice fried chicken, and then we're doing a pakora waffle to go along with it with a hot lime. Like a hot uh, chili lime maple syrup. Like my southern New Orleans style and his Indian style coming together, it's going to be amazing. We're going to do a chicken breast, and we're going to have like a creamy onion sauce on top, and then we're going to do a polenta cake with that. We're taking lead on this, and Samantha's here to taste and make sure everything is executed correctly. We're doing a roast chicken breast with a polenta cake, carrot slaw, and uh, onion sauce. We just collaborated on different ideas, and we work well together, so it seems like it's going to work. 20 minutes gone, 25 minutes remaining. Let's go. Right, Caesar and Mark. Yes, Chef. Yes. Tell me about the dish. What are we doing? We're going to go with caramelized onion and bacon polenta cake, Chef. And then what we're going to do with the chicken, we're going to try to make a roulade. I'm going to make a mousse out of the white meat. Very complicated dish. It is. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Hey, Ryan. I see that flambe action, baby. You like that? I like that. Ryan, Jerron, what's going on? What's up, Chef? All right, so talk to me about your dish. We two southern boys. We got some good fried chicken going on. We got some cabbage. We got some bacon and onion jam with some bourbon in there. All right, good luck, gentlemen, OK? Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Thank you. Chef. Oh, it's looking terrible. It looks terrible. That's my bad. I'm sorry. OK, what are we going to do? What do we do? I don't know. Right, uh, Ashley and Taylor, tell me about the dish. We are highlighting our southern roots, so we're making right. cornbread and a carrot puree. What's the onion schlocks for? We wanted to have an onion petal and then put some of the gravy inside. Petal? Right, where you brulee the onion and then you peel. That's normally in a chipini or something smaller and less harsh. Is it for visual or is it for flavor? I've never done it before, chef. I wanted to taste it first. Why are you doing things testing them that you've never tasted before? It's just sounding all over the place. Oh, my lord. Who mauled this? Just ask me, who mauled this? I did, chef. I twisted it out of the joint. Do you know how to break down a chicken? Yes, chef. Do you know how to yes, break chef. down? Your two girls I believed in. I mean, I've seen better performances than Junior Master Chef with eight-year-olds. Oh, my lord. Who mauled this? Just ask me, who mauled this? I did, chef. I twisted it out of the joint. I, 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 I'm, I'm just expecting a, a better quality. Your two girls I believed in. I mean, 
I've seen better performances than Junior MasterChef with eight-year-olds. Get it together, girls. Yes, yeah, Chef. Oh, my <laughs> lord. Ooh, baby. The chicken's good. It's ready to go. Put it on here and then put it in the blast chiller. I got you, I got you. 11 minutes to go. Let's go. Speed up, guys. Woo. All right, so Shanika Bond, you from Miami, Shanika. Uh -huh. We have Bond all the way from China. Yeah. How you guys are going to incorporate both of your particular styles in this one dish and make something harmonious and delicious? He's sweet, I'm spicy. So we're going to yes. go sweet and spicy, yes. Uh, I'm going to make a stuffed chicken breast with some pork. We're going to go ahead and pair that with a Valenta cake. OK. And then we're going to go ahead and do an apple, carrot, salad, doing an Asian twist on it with some ginger, lemon, with, you know, some bacon. All right, good luck. Thank you. Keep it going, keep it going. We want to, like, get a nice crust on it. Don't be afraid. Right, Joe, what's the idea behind this? What are you doing? So it's a polenta cake with a little parmigiano, and we're going to do a chicken milanese with an arugula salad with some pancetta and uh, tricolored yeah. tomatoes. What's in there, Ralph? Polenta, cream, butter. Is everything going according to plan, Ralph? This is amazing. I mean, it's turning out perfect. Good luck. Thank you, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Dude, Emily, I'm so excited right now. Just under eight minutes to go. What do you think about this color I'm getting on this chicken? I love it, I love it. Loving it, loving that color? Oh, yeah. Fascinating, Caesar and Mark are doing a stuffed chicken roulade. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. They're taking the breast of chicken, turning that into a mousse, and stuffing that inside a thigh. And the chicken thigh is hard when it's stuffed because you never know if it's cooked or not. So I'm going to do it get here. Get that meat out, yeah, get that meat out. Speaking of roulades, Bowen and Shanika, they have a chicken breast that has pork stuffing, which potentially could be undercooked and the chicken breast overcooked. So there's that. 90 seconds remaining. Speed up, guys. I like that sauce. Good job nice. on the sauce. Awesome. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, All right, we got to get that chicken on there. Go for it. I don't think we can slice it. Look, we have like 30 seconds. We have to slice it. We got to get the bacon on top. Bacon on top of the carrots? In half. No, yeah. this way? Okay, the bacon was bacon. Go, 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 go. At an angle, at an angle. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Here, then you go. OK. 20 seconds remaining. Why did you slice it that way? Taylor and Ashley are flustered like anything. Oh, my lord. Look at how this is cut. It's the wrong way. OK, OK. 10, 9, nine eight, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, it's courage, bro. 3, Just throw it on. Just throw it 2, on. Boom. 1, and stop. That's it. Woo. Wow. Well done. Oh, nice. Let's go, Joe. Now it's time to get even closer to those dishes. Please, Joe and Ralph, step forward. Thank you. I'm just so happy to have made this dish with my mentor, Joe B. I got so much tips that somebody would pay Joe a lot of money for it. Definitely one of the best days of my life. Wow. Unreal. That looks delicious. Ralph, describe the dish, please. It's a chicken milanese with a fried polenta cake and a fresh arugula salad with pickled veggies and a homemade balsamic vinaigrette. Ralph, this is once in a lifetime experience. You could be working exactly. with a man of, of Joe's caliber. What did you learn? Definitely, number one, the techniques. You know, with starting out with the polenta, how to properly bread the chicken, how to spread it like you know, very thin, but also even. Chicken tastes like it's comfy. It's yeah. so soft and tender. And you use the cornmeal correctly. You cooked it out and exactly. then caramelized it. The, the bacon adds a beautiful seasoning to the salad. Exactly. And that's what it needs. It needs some salt. It needs some love. And that chicken, forget about it. Outstanding job. Seriously delicious. Uh, Ralph, the first one on the balcony. Perfect. Well done, bro. Thanks, Joe. Good Thanks, job. Man. Thanks, 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 Ralph. Right. Next, we'd like to taste Caesar and Mark. Mark and I are proud of the work we put into this dish. There was teamwork, there was communication, and we feel we created a successful plate. This teacher-to-student team is definitely earning an A tonight. Mark, Caesar. Yeah. Chef. Describe the dish, please. So we have a chicken roulade where I took the thigh and I filled it with chicken mousse made out of the breast. I put in uh, bell pepper, jalapenos, and then the polenta cake. We folded in bacon and caramelized onions, and then we roasted the carrots. Who conceptualized this dish? I did, chef. And are you proud of this dish? Yes, chef. Absolutely. It looks terrible. Come on, guys. It's like the size of a quarter. It looks sad. It looks unappetizing. It's terrible.
Mark Caesar, it looks terrible. It looks sad, it looks unappetizing, and it's like the size of a quarter. So I've got more polenta and carrots than I have chicken. I've got four slices of chicken. And I've got raw bell pepper in a chicken mousse. It does not make sense. It, it's just, it's really badly executed. It tastes terrible. Come on, guys. The best part of the chicken is the thigh, and the one that needs all the work is the breast. But you've pureed the breast and put it inside a thigh. The carrot's the most tastiest thing on there. I'm underwhelmed, I'm disappointed, and you need to step up, both of you. Absolutely. Understood, Chef. I was absolutely confident in our dish, but I couldn't have been more wrong. I don't know what's up, I don't know what's down, but I think I might be facing my first elimination challenge. Next up, Julia and SJ, please. Let's go. I'm really proud of the way that SJ and I work together. And I'm really confident in the dish, but the judges' expectations are high. So I don't know if we did enough to be safe tonight. SJ, describe the dish, please. So you have a pan-seared and roasted chicken breast, baby carrot pickle salad, crispy chicken skin chicharron, polenta cake, and a white wine reduction cream sauce. Who took charge of that tonight? Julia definitely did, Chef. And who cooked that chicken? I did. Yeah, beautiful. Wow. And delicious. Seasoning on point, chicken cooked beautifully, and the crispy skin just gives it that extra texture. Sauce, immaculate, and the whole thing is just restaurant quality. Well done, both of you. Thank you so Thank you, much. Sir. Amazing. It's really delicious. The chicharron is great. The polenta cake is textbook. And here's what I love, guys. You put this really beautiful smattering of herbs and garlic on top of the chicken. And that right there, friends, is the difference between something being good to being exceptional. Great job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Good job, guys. Okay, next, Farhan and Emily. Tell me about the dish. So we did an Indian-style chicken and waffles. Emily spearheaded the chicken, and I helped spice it up. And then I thought I was doing a pakora waffle, and then we came together on a slaw. The chicken's actually seasoned well. It's really crispy, and this waffle is really good. But there's a tone of sweetness that pervades everything. But um, it's a great collaboration. Next up, Bowen, Shanika. Describe the dish, please. We have a pork stuffed chicken as a sweet and spicy sauce, fried polenta that's cooked with chicken broth, butter, and uh, salt and pepper. The chicken breast is the toughest one to get right, and it's dry quickly. So putting the pork through the center is a very smart move. The polenta is delicious. And that sauce just lifts it up. Great job. Next up, Samantha Chelsea. Samantha and I made a crispy chicken breast with caramelized onion cream sauce with a Parmesan lent cake and then carrots with bacon lardons. The chicken is cooked perfectly. And the onion sauce, it's beautiful, it's soft, it's luscious. It's giving the necessary richness to the dish. The texture on the polenta cake, I'm iffy about, but the flavor's there. Good job, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Nice work, guys. Next up, Ryan and Jaron. I've made fried chicken numerous of times. I grew up five years old in the kitchen making fried chicken with my mom. And so I'm really feeling confident about this dish. Gentlemen, describe the dish, please. What we have is cornmeal crusted fried chicken with dual colored cabbage and also a bourbon, bacon, and onion jam on the side. It's as crunchy as anything. It sounds like I'm eating a bag of freaking chips. Please don't tell me that you dredged this chicken in that whole cornmeal. That's what I did, Chef. 
You can't take cornmeal, crunchy cornmeal, and then cook it by frying it. You've got to grind this first. I've never known this, yet. Yeah. It's just crunch, 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 crunch. However, it's seasoned on point. But that is not your best effort, period. There's some good elements on this dish. This jam is actually delicious, it's super spicy, sweet. Love it. The cabbage is fine, but um, the hero of your dish is a travesty. It's too bad, because they're like two good guys. Sorry, man. I'm not feeling too great. It's all good, bro. It's not the review that I wanted, but I should have done something about that cornmeal and broken it down. Hey. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? Next up, Ashley and Taylor. Our final dish is completely not what we planned on. Ashley and I were definitely not on the same page, and it is completely coming through on this plate. I am just mortified. <sighs> OK. Describe the dish, please. Pan-seared chicken breast with sautéed carrots and bacon and cornbread cake. First of all, I have never, ever seen such a dysfunctional 45 minutes in the history of this competition. What happened? <sighs> Things went wrong quickly. Honestly, I didn't really agree with our concept in the beginning. But uh, I asked if we can, are you going to nail this cornbread? And I trusted Ashley in nailing a carrot puree. And she said yes, and we had nothing. Carrot puree? Where is that? It's, it's not there, chef. Why puree baby carrots? You could eat them freaking raw. That was Taylor's idea. She wanted a carrot puree oh at the bottom of the plate. That was, n you, that, no, was, you we wanted both a said a carrot, carrot puree, puree, and I said, can you nail that? And you said yes. And I said, leave some holes so that we can house our tate carrots. I don't remember you saying that. Ashley and Taylor, why puree baby carrots? You could eat them freaking raw. That was Taylor's idea. She wanted a carrot puree oh at the bottom of the plate. God. That was, n you, that, no, was, there, we both a said a carrot, carrot puree, and I said, can you nail that? And you said yes. And I said, leave some hole. I don't remember you saying that. Take responsibility, Dan. Watching both of you work is like chewing gum with a mouthful of nuts. <sighs> Two smart, talented girls, and look at the result. So on point, but seriously, the cornbread is dry, it's crumbly, and out of all those carrots, that's what I've got, and they're bitter, and the chicken's cut like freaking elephant toenails. Who who cuts it? Like that. I started to cut it, and then Ashley was like, don't cut it that way, so she cut right into it. Oh, my lord. So you couldn't even cut a chicken breast up together? No. Here's what pains me more than anything. What I saw, what I tasted, and what I believed in both of you weeks ago coming into this competition was nothing short of phenomenal. But right now, with these two guys standing behind me like that, I look the biggest idiot in this kitchen. We both have a Gordon Ramsay pin on our aprons, and we have dishonored him. If he would have just ripped it off of us, I don't know if I could have blamed him. Tonight, some of you really embraced this challenge and shone as a team. The winning team is Julia and SJ. <laughs> well done. I got the best dish of the night with Julia. You are safe from elimination. Please head up to the safety of the balcony. My hunch about Julia was right. She is just a great cook, and I'm just glad that I was able to work together with her. Now for the bad news. Please, all the remaining teams, come down to the front.
Ashley and Taylor. Oh, Ryan and Jaron. Caesar and Mark. You six are obviously cooking in the next challenge. The rest of you are safe. Head up to the balcony, please. Well done. Great job. I'm going into my first elimination challenge. I couldn't be more nervous. It's very intimidating, but I absolutely plan to make Joe proud and stay in this competition. Your second and final challenge of the night is nothing like your first. Tonight, you'll be replicating a dish that strikes fear in the heart of every home cook, and a dish that is just as frightening for seasoned chefs like us. It is, of course, a cheese souffle. A true wonder of the culinary world. Crisp on top and inside, soft and creamy and cheesy. Look at it. Every mouthful is a delight. Mm. Nice. But simplicity can be misleading. Tonight, all of you need to focus and make us the best souffle of your lives. Elimination is on the line, and at least one of you will be going home. You'll have 40 minutes for this challenge. Within that 40 minutes, you need to serve us one perfect souffle. And you can serve it any time you'd like within that 40 minutes. Now, if you're smart, you'll have a strategy. Think about it. Three ramekins, two ovens, one perfect souffle. This is not a race tonight, but you must have a souffle on the table behind you by the time your 40 minutes is up. Now, all of you, head to your stations. I have never made a souffle in my entire life, and I am terrified because there's no room for error. In front of you. You all have the same exact ingredients to make us a cheese souffle. Right. Your 40 minutes start now. Let's go, guys. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Stay organized. Let's go, let's go guys. Come on. Come on. Right, six talented home cooks all fighting for their lives. Right now, this is not a time to be adventurous. You need to be focused, smart, and understand that souffles are chemistry. Make sure that I measure my butter out correctly. So, Gordon, give me some insight on what the souffle is all about. First off, you make the most amazing bechamel sauce. That's your base. So it's butter, flour, and then you bring the milk up to the boil, and you season that little onion powder, garlic powder. You add that milk to your roux, and that's the start of your cheese sauce. Grated cheese in, take it off the heat. If you overcook that roux with the cheese in there, the fat starts to seep mm. out, and it's already broken. This is working. Once you've got this beautiful, light, creamy bechamel cheese sauce, let it cool down and fold in your egg yolks. You then start whipping your egg whites. Perfect. Just under 10 minutes gone, 30 minutes remaining. I need it. Take your time, Ashley. Stay organized, baby. Stay organized. Ashley, how are you feeling? I am feeling strong chef. The first souffle I ever had was a cheese souffle in France. So I'm like channeling all of these memories. Have you ever made a cheese souffle before? I've made it one time. The first time I was successful. I had eight aprons to give out yeah. and you were one of them. Yeah, chef. I'm expecting big things Absolutely. from you. Let's go. Good luck. Thank you, chef. Put a cup on right up. It looks good, Mark. All right, Mark. Yes, sir. You're wearing my apron. Are you worried? Um, I'm a little worried just because I am in the elimination and it is my first time. You make a lot of souffles at home? I'm more of a dessert souffle person. Okay, if you can make a dessert souffle, you can make this, right? It doesn't Thank change you. that much. So three ramekins, two ovens. Are you going to put all three ramekins in at the same time? Oh, no way. Absolutely not. That's too many eggs in one basket. I'm going to go one, wait a few minutes, maybe two. And then after the first one comes out, I'll have the third in. Good luck, man. Thank you so much. You got this, Ryan. You got this. 
All right, Ryan, how we doing, buddy? I'm uh, not super confident, because this is uh, a little out of my territory, but I'm trying. If I'm not psyching myself out on this, those are the people that go home. I only had eight of those aprons, and I trusted you with one of them. All right, I'm counting on you. Go, keep going, keep going. 17 minutes to go. In three minutes from now, you've got to start putting souffles in the oven. Look, Caesar's cheese. It looks a little bit broken. I hope he hasn't put the cheese in, cooked it out on the stove, right. and the oil's coming oh. out of it. I it hope not. Um, guys, calm, cool, collective. Ashley's got one in the oven. All right, Ashley. I'm really worried about Taylor. The one who's running behind right now that I'm serious concerned about is Taylor. Let's go, Taylor. Come on. Guys, look at Ryan's mix. It doesn't look like there's any cheese in there. It looks like yogurt. Mark's going in. Mark's going in. Let's go, Caesar. There we go, Jaron, dude. Jaron's in. Jaron is in. You got this, Ryan. You got this. Taylor's the only one with no souffle in. Wow. Taylor, you've got yes. to get a souffle in the oven. Yes, chef. Work faster, work faster, come on. It. Let's go, Taylor. Everybody has their souffles in the oven but Taylor. And time is running out like fast. Doesn't it take 11 minutes for a souffle to cook? She's done. Taylor, get one in the oven now. I don't have it mixed. Taylor, just get it in. 11 minutes to go. Taylor's the only one with no souffle in. Wow. Taylor, get one in the oven now. I don't have it mixed. 11 minutes to go. Taylor, everybody has their souffles in the oven but you. Doesn't it take 11 minutes for a souffle to cook? Let's go, Taylor. Taylor, just get it in. Taylor, you better hustle. Minimum time for cooking is 11 minutes. We've got to get them in. All right, guys, Taylor's souffle is finally in at 10 minutes to go. <sighs> I'm really concerned about Taylor. I don't know what we're going to taste. I don't know if Taylor's is going to turn out. So you can come back from that. With 60 seconds left to go, crank up the heat. But it's a risk. There is a risk. You crank up the oven too early, and the souffle can explode. It'll actually pop out of its mold. The waiting game. This is the worst part of souffle. Eight minutes to go, Taylor. What is happening with you tonight? I Where's the souffles? They're all in there. When you put it at the top of the oven, what happens to the it's souffle? It's closer to the heat. And the top of the souffle cooks underneath is raw. You haven't got many choices left now, so just be smart. Okay. Okay, and crank that oven up when necessary. Don't go too early. Oh. They rising? Oh, yeah. Oh, I got a riser. You're on. You need the souffle in the middle there so it cooks evenly. Which one's coming out first? I believe this one is the one that's supposed to be coming out first. It's kind of tilted a little bit. So I'm probably going to have to go with the other one, Chef. You're here for a reason, because Joe believes in you. Be decisive. It needs to be down there before the end. OK, thank you. Hey, guys, keep a close eye on the time, man. Just be ready to put it out. Right, young man, where are we going? Tell me. This is my first one. So far, it's taking a rise, so. What's the paper under there? Uh, the parchment paper, Chef. Why? Um, I should have taken it off. I don't know why I didn't. Yeah. Sometimes when that paper blows, it might hit the, it top might hit of the it. souffle. Oh, don't touch it now. Let's just hope it doesn't blow. And six, okay. But you're in there. This is oh. freaking torture. Four minutes remaining. Oh my god. This is intense. I can hear the trepidation in their voice. They are so nervous. You get against it? Let's stick them at the top of the oven. So if they crank up the heat, it's going to burn on top and it'll be oh, raw that's underneath. A problem. All of you remember, when the clock is at zero, you need to have a souffle down in front of us. Three minutes to go. Oh. Ashley's opened the oven door. Souffle out. Mark's got one out. Look at Mark's. Souffle's going back in. What's he doing putting it back in the oven? Oh, my What God. is he doing? Rule number one, you don't take a souffle out of the oven and then stick it back in. Because you can't do that. The, the temperature difference. Yep, absolutely. You'll start it's deflating just... it. Don't second guess. Just choose. Just choose. Oh, my God. I'm not going to use this one. Beautiful, Ashley. Beautiful. I'm coming. Yes. Yeah. Ashley's coming. Yeah. Right. Well done. There we go, Ryan. Get that up there. Wow. Let's go. My souffle looks great. 
but does it taste as good as it looks? There is no room for error. It needs to be perfectly cooked, or I may be going home. Oh my God. I know I'm not down there cooking, but I'm sweating like I am. Everyone down there is scrambling. And on top of that, the judges are tasting each and every souffle as they come out of the oven. I mean, this is literally the most insane challenge I've ever seen before. One minute to go. Keep going, guys. Keep going. Guys, come on. Work faster, work faster, come on. It. Get up there, go. 30 seconds to go. Let's go, guys, come, come on. Come on, guys. Let's go, Mark, let's go. <laughs> come on. Come on, guys. Get it up there. All right. 10, 9, Nine eight, 8, 7, 6, 5, five four, five, four, five, four, five, five, 3, 2, 1, and stop. stop. All of you, well done. That's good. I'm so glad I'm not down there cooking because making a cheese souffle was a very difficult challenge to pull off in 40 minutes. And no matter who goes home, we're definitely going to be losing someone strong. It's so quiet that you can hear a pin drop. And the judges are not giving anything away. Based on their faces, I cannot tell whether this is a good dish, whether it's bad. This is so intense. This is my first time in an elimination challenge. And personally, I feel good. I think visually, my cheese souffle looks great. I really like the golden brown color around the edges of the souffle. But tonight could come down to one mistake, and I'm out the door. Wow. That was the toughest, the most grueling 40 minutes you've ever experienced inside this kitchen. All of you now, come round to the front, please. Let's go. Excuse us. This is really tough. That was extraordinary. Yeah, that was Jeez. good. So I mean... many different factors that are involved there. Oh, I don't know about that. I ain't got a chance to taste it. One was just egg whites, right? Yeah, insufficient cheese. Like Absolutely. basically an egg white omelet. I hope they like the taste of mine. The what other was one was broken. undercooked, broken. Yeah, separated, so it didn't rise properly. I think only one of my corners was still custardy. Uh, one outstanding one, by the way. Can I just say textbook? Absolutely. It was just cheesy and creamy yeah. and good. It was a tough one. Yeah, it was a definitely tough one. Yeah, all right, ready? Yeah. All right, guys, tonight you all performed admirably. But we have to say goodbye to at least one of you. Now, there was one home cook that brought us a souffle that was clearly head and shoulders above the rest, done by one of the home cooks wearing my apron. An incredible performance from a 19-year-old dishwasher. Well done, Mark. Nice work, Mark. Good job, buddy. You are safe. Head up to the balcony. Good job. It's my first elimination challenge, and I came out on top. This is definitely something that really shows that I've worked that investment Joe put into me. Now, there are three home cooks that didn't quite nail it, nor did they do so bad that they have to leave this evening. Ashley, Jerron, Taylor. Are you kidding me? Please, head up to the balcony. Now for the bad news. Two home cooks, both mentored by Aron. Caesar, you know your mixture wasn't perfect. There's nobody in this room that would continue making a souffle with a broken cheese sauce. Ryan, there was excessive egg white in lumps across your mix. You both made some fundamental errors this evening. When I call your name, please step forward. Caesar.
Tonight, you are safe. Head on upstairs. I'm happy I'm safe, but I'm not happy with myself. It's a wake-up call for me. Just like I tell my students, I have to make sure I bring my best effort every single time. Ryan, unfortunately, young man, your souffle tonight tasted more of egg white than it did of a cheese souffle. That's why you're leaving this competition. Ryan, let me tell you, I saw your spirit, your unbelievable cool demeanor. That's why I chose to give you one of my aprons. You've grown throughout this journey. Please keep your head up. You, you have a beautiful future ahead of you. Young man, please place your apron on top of your bench. Thank you. Hey, much love. We'll see you in Houston. Love you, Ryan. Nobody wants to be eliminated, but it's been a dream ride. I came into this competition just a drummer from Houston, Texas, but now I know that I'm more than that. Love you, bro. I played on some of the greatest stages in the world, but I definitely found my rhythm in the MasterChef kitchen. Next time, the MasterChef restaurant opens its doors to the world's toughest food critics. I want you. So many kids. Welcome, welcome. Your table is waiting. This is impossible. I need steaks over here. Let's go, let's go. Do you like new strip? Uh, no thanks. Oh, dear. And a special guest. Christina Tozzi, the queen of cakes. With the ultimate challenge. I don't know if I made the right decision in investing my apron in you. One potato, two potato. You've just taken a bite out of MasterChef. Now here are a few more shows to check out from Fox. Are you ready? You are hot. I'm in a sweet spot. I'm feeling good. The sun is shining. Wake up. Shower!